वेलकम टू द शो कॉर्न फ्लैग एफ पी एल मिनी लीग विनर अभिषेक घंटी लॉन्ग टाइम लिसनर ऑफ द शो फ्रेंड ऑफ द फ्लैग वन ऑफ आर बिगेस्ट सपोर्टर्स एंड ऑल राउंड फैंटेस्टिक गाय ऑल्सो अ चेलसी सपोर्टर सो मे बी नॉट दैट मच ऑफ अ फैंटेस्टिक गाय पर मैं कौन हूँ बोलने वाला बैंक मैं तो मैन यूनाइटेड को सपोर्ट करता हूँ हमारे दिन अच्छे नहीं चल रहे वेलकम टू द शो घंटी हाउस इट गोइंग All All good, bro. All good. bro. Thank you for inviting me. Finally, we made this happen. Finally, and, we made this happen. Yes. And what a week! As we said, what a week to make this happen because I actually need some FPL therapy. Yeah. If this was last week, I would be all high and saying, "Are, are, who? What is FPL? I'm the king, like nineteen thousand <laughs> in the world and all." But what? 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 to almost 200k in the world with semenyo left to play which i just realized 10 minutes ago so with semenyo uh, left to play wo ki, wo aaj khel raha hai kya ha burma south end mein aaj raat ko hai if i'm not oh, wrong oh right so who cares have... about burma <laughs> south end <laughs> <laughs> yeah you said <laughs> only like only fpl people care about burma south end or else no one cares okay yeah, i'll tell you what i'll tell you what Gamble. because you said that with the confidence of someone who's expecting a big change you felt like okay i'm going to go from 200k back to my original position which is 19k <laughs> if you really if this makes a difference and you jump past a 100k even muki i don't have semenyo i'm expecting a rank drop bro oh no <laughs> oh no that's even worse so you just Yes. Not terror watching it. Not even hope watching it. I'm so sorry. I'll call it after. Bro, so this is this is the thing, right? Like FPL was going great for me, but this weekend has just completely derailed everything. Gunty and I were neck and neck at the top of the corner flag mini league for this season. Nice. I was. I was in the top 1,000 in India, which I've never done before in my life. I was so proud of myself. uh and this week wild card use kiya i think anti tune bhi wild card use kiya na this week card use kiya ha and it just hasn't worked out for either of us i'll tell you about me let let me uh, open this up maine cole palmer ko nikal diya aur jackson ko le aaya just because i wanted to open funds up to get some liverpool assets in luis diaz was in form maine socha sala ko nahi lete diaz ko aur lete aur saka ko lete so that will be a bit of a differential choice uh aur cole palmer ko hataya maine uske liye कोल पामर ने चार गोल मारे साका ने कुछ घंटा किया लुइस डियाज ने कुछ घंटा किया 90 मिनट्स भी नहीं खेला लुइस डियाज ट्रेंट अलेक्सेंडर आर्नल्ड वाज इन माय टीम एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ दिस गेम वीक एंड आफ्टर द वाइल्ड कार्ड इज वेल डिड नॉट गेट अ क्लीन शीट बिकॉज फकिंग कोनाटे एंड एलिसन कुडेंट फिगर इट आउट इफ एलिसन हैड टू कम टेक द बॉल बेसिक डिफेंसिव एरर फकिंग चूट्स तो वो हो गया और और क्या है और और uh, uh, और क्या है वॉटकिन था वॉटकिन नहीं था मैंने जॉन डुरैन को दिया था क्योंकि जॉन डुरैन ऑलवेज कम्स ऑन एज सब एंड स्कोर्स एंड ही इज डन वेल फॉर मी इन द लास्ट टू वीक्स तो मैंने सोचा इसको नहीं निकालते हैं तो जॉन डुरैन को रखा मैंने जॉन डुरैन ने कुछ नहीं किया ही डिंट इवन स्टार्ट सो आई डिंट इवन गेट इज 90 मिनट पॉइंट्स सब्स्टिट्यूट हो गया आके उसने स्कोर नहीं किया एजरी कौनसा इज इन माय डिफेंस उसका भी क्लीन शीट गया मॉर्गन रॉजर्स को एक कुछ तो मिला सो दैट वाज वन गुड थिंग बट ओ माय God, what a fucking drop! It was the worst wild card we could ever play, Amo. Absolutely, it was by far the worst wild card we could play. Yeah, and in the words of United manager Eric Ten Hag, we have to stick to the plan. Uh, we stick together. We have to look at ourselves. We go again. We know what we know what our mistakes were. We know what we need to do wrong. So, bencho karna. I'm so tired of. of hearing this same spiel from that guy all over again but that is the second part of therapy any any more fpl let's hear let's hear about your wild card ganti tune kya kiya wild card mein so i was doing as you see i was doing very well in the first five weeks i had haland and sala which were the two highest goal scoring players i ignored the arsenal oh. players which worked out very well yeah okay no i was just going to say oh is that basically that's oh. the secret get the that two highest secret. people and it's like he hey man gunty what your tip just buy the two most <laughs> precious stocks dude like so it's like basically really, the whole it. point the whole it's point like, is 
if haland doesn't play well doesn't matter because yeah. everyone else has him right exactly yeah, yeah. so you're there with them sab log yeah. saath mein will be sad yeah. but when you don't start with haland then over it's every week you're like what's going on because yeah. that robot is scoring two goals minimum every week no, yeah. no, so wait let me get this straight you have haland and you have hala okay you have hala i have yeah, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. You, so you have Of the remaining players, the thirteen of them, they're all worth four four million each. I'm guessing. No, because no. The, I I got in two very good, uh, you know, the smaller players. Yeah, differential. Rogers, Rogers is five point five, but he's enabling so much more in my team. He's letting me have my Trent. He's letting oh, me have wow. Haaland and Salah. Yeah. So all that pick. So again, for example, this week my go-to pick for the budget options was McNeil. But I'm like, why? Chal, I'll stick to Rogers, and well, McNeil scored two wonder strikes. And who would have thought that that would happen, considering it's Everton? It's Everton. Us <laughs> Everton feel... mese had DCL cover, but that fellow did nothing. Chupia log hai yar. Ye team na, ye team aur uske supporters sab pagal hai. Absolutely, sab pagal hai. I don't think we know any Everton supporters, do we, Mukesh? No idea. We have no idea any of any sub- Everton supporters. We have no. By the way, in I- fact, at some point during the week when I had met him, he was like, "What Everton? I don't know." And then he then he goes. So I I was conveying the news to him that they had won, because he was not following the game. And okay. He's like, I, so this I, team I, that you I speak have, of. I have something else to add to this. I heard about this exact encounter from the man in question, Akar Chandan, a uh, known Everton fan. उसने कहा कि यू आर नॉट कन्वेइंग दी इन्फॉर्मेशन टू हिम यू आर कन्वेइंग इन्फॉर्मेशन टू अनुस्तुप हु इज अनदर फ्रेंड ऑफ आर्स हु वाज एट दिस सेड इवेंट या आई वाज जनरली स्क्रीमिंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन आउट एट व्हिच पॉइंट ही हैड क्लेरिफिकेशंस ही वाज लाइक दिस टीम यू स्पीक ऑफ कॉल्ड एवरीथिंग हु स्कोर्ड फॉर देम इफ यू डोंट इवन नो द टीम हाउ विल यू नो द पीपल हु स्कोर्ड फॉर देम नो बट ही डिडंट नो दैट्स व्हाई ही वाज आस्किंग यू हु स्कोर्ड अच्छा देयर समबडी कॉल्ड वाइट मकनील हु स्कोर्ड फॉर देम But yeah, basically, long story short, both Gunty and I, who were first and second in uh, the Corner Flag Mini League, in most other mini leagues that we are a part of, uh, have colossally left a massive dump. Like, have taken a huge steaming pile of shit on our own FPL chances in this one week. So, अभी अगले हफ्ते देखेंगे क्या करें. What is what is your way to remedy this next uh, for next weekend, yeah, Gunty? Nothing. I know that as I told you when we were venting about it yesterday, that it is a marathon. We are just in game week six. Yes, yeah. we've used our wild card, but majority of the players we have are the good picks. We had yeah. a logic to pick them, and yeah. why go for the two-week Palmer punt when he has Liverpool, Arsenal, and everyone coming up? Yes, yeah. all logic. Ta. Yeah. पर फुटबॉल ने मैच हो दी है अलग बात एब्सोल्युटली आल्सो इट वाज इट इज ग्रेट टू हैव एरिक टन हाग ऑन द पॉडकास्ट एवरीबॉडी बिकॉज़ सेम थिंग्स आई एम श्योर एरिक टन हाग आल्सो सेड इन हिज पोस्ट मैच कॉन्फ्रेंस हां यू नो वी इट इज इट इज लॉजिक इट्स अ मैराथन इट्स ओनली गेम वीक 6 द एंटायर सीजन इज देयर टू गो सो या लाइक लेट माय थेरेपी कंटिन्यू बिकॉज़ ओ बग इफ एफपीएल हैडंट फक्ड मी ओवर दिस वीकेंड इनफ ऑलरेडी Manchester United collectively decided कि नहीं नहीं the PM Sunday like night है <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sunday night 9 p.m. I'm sure Amog is at home I'm sure he's having a nice gin and tonic he's had a nice relaxing Sunday he's been looking forward to this game how can we fuck this up even more for him because oh my God right from the first starting whistle from kick off it's like Manchester United decided we will play the worst football ever known to mankind aise lagta tha ki bencho abhi 31st october ka halloween party mein they were going dressed up as the worst football team in the world okay it so was... i have not watched the game but i really have to ask one question because i saw this on instagram <laughs> did ten hag really take out kobe mainu for mason mount yes yes was that a transfer that happened this game Sorry, Eight. move substitution. Yeah. Yes, that that happened this game because Fernandez got sent off, and about two minutes later, Kobe Mine was taken off for Mason Mount. Although it is said that it was because of injury, Kobe okay. Mine had a knock. Okay. Yeah, he did look like after he was substituted, Mine was complaining not about being substituted, but about some injury that screwed him over. But yes, but you should also know this that after Mine limped off, and before. Mount went on. 
There was a good 45 seconds of play that went on where United yeah. were left to nine men. Yes. I'm like the audacity. The I mean, audacity. Wow. But that is the thing, right? Like, that is what I'm saying. Like, it wasn't just the football that was infuriating. Like, basic management, touchline, decisions bhi nahi le sakte ye laude log. Like, this is, it, it, it's so, it's so frustrating to see a team like this, like, be so dysfunctional. This is the football version of Shit's Creek. Like, this is that dysfunctional a family. It is fucking arrested development. <laughs> Nothing can be done with these guys. These are oh, all... That is exactly what is happening at United. These are all terrible people. They are all yeah. terrible people. Even Michael Bluth from Arrested Development, Jason Bateman, who's supposed to be the straight character in that series, he's also fucked up in Man United. Who can be Jason Bateman in uh, Man United? Who's the one straight character? I think Ronaldo that was that one straight guy. No, I think it's I think it's third choice goalkeeper Tom Heaton, who's just <laughs> there, <laughs> who was bench pe bed ke dekh raha. He'll have the wildfire chal raha. He'll have the tell-all book that makes us go, oh, that's what was happening. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. that's why they were all raging and they were all they they thought they. It'll turn out that they were more interested in the table tennis tournament in the Man United reserves or something. That's what yeah. they came here for. <laughs> I think they were all they were all more interested in their FPL. They were like, "Oh, we are ahead of Amog and Ganti right now. This is going great for us." No, it's not, guys. You're three nil down. <laughs> Thoda perspective, please. But yes, it was a it was a shambolic game. Let's start off with the first goal uh, because. That was again one of the worst pieces of defending that I have seen in my life. Diego Dalo just did not track back. Matlab, he was jogging back. He can see that Brennan Johnson has gone ahead of him and he did nothing. And on the other side, Delict and Mazraoui also couldn't do anything to stop. Spurs' centre back, Mickey Wenderwen, from cutting through. Now, this is the centre half who takes the ball of Marcus Rashford in his area, in their half. And runs the entire length of the pitch. Full speed. And, no? and full, full speed. speed. Full speed yeah. This is a center half. It's not a winger. It's not even a defensive midfielder. It is a center half. Who does this? Yeah, the FIFA 94, mein, you could just sprint through the entire team and score a goal. This was that glitch. Oh, people still do that when I play FIFA. <laughs> I don't do it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 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 to me. Um, that's true. You think Mickey Van Der Veen is the next Kyle Walker in the making? Except I mean, probably, Mickey he probably knows I, against Manchester goals. United. Even Tahit Chong is the next fucking Ryan Giggs in the making. <laughs> so you know, like there's there's no there's no uh, uh, saying about any potential of any player when they're playing against Manchester United. Everything goes for a toss. Either koi bhi, matlab, literally, who's the worst player that you can think of of all time? I guess currently a version of Harry Maguire in that 2020-2020. Uh, Harry Maguire, if he was playing against Man United, would be prime Paolo Maldini. That's true. And that's Paolo the, Maldini, that's, that's, if he was playing for Man United, would have been... Would be prime, prime Harry Maguire. <laughs> the prime Harry Maguire. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it's, it's ridiculous, right? And uh, what's interesting is... Eric Tanag, Dutch manager, he has got a bunch of Dutch players in the in the in the squad now. He's got Delict, he's got uh, uh, he's been looking at De Jong, he's got Malasia. He's been Mickey, looking at De Jong for four years now. Uh, yeah, hamara to ye window shopping chalte hi rehta hai. Wo, matlab, it's a one-sided love affair <laughs> that keeps on happening. <laughs> like we are being like Frankie De Jong, come play for Manchester United. He's like, why will I leave one basket case of a club? To come play, pay for another basket case of a club. He is just thinking, "Tum log apna sambalo. Pehle mere ko mera arrears nikalne do Barcelona se. They owe me 19 million in unpaid wages. Wo pehle nikalne do mujhe. Fir aage ka sochte hai. But oh fuck, it is just oh my god. So many Dutch players you've got from your time in the Eredivisie, from your time at Ajax and all. You've got your uh, talent identification for Dutch players, right? And here is a Dutch player who fucking ran through your entire team. Like, just <laughs> the irony of it all now. Sometimes life and the Premier League is extremely poetic. Yeah, and it's really sad because against Liverpool, it was Ryan Gravenberch, I think, who was like the man of the match <laughs> yeah, and yeah. controlled the game. And I was thinking, I'm like, oh my God, 
how much more tragic does it get for yeah. united very tragic and i love it <laughs> like yeah i absolutely were, love it yeah. Yeah, yeah there were a couple yeah. of liverpool fan accounts on twitter that were like it's kind of sad to see united through this i'm like no it's no. Destroy. Absolute joy. Noble sighted. Yeah. yeah, I don't want we this have woke won. nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as Sean, as Sean Dyche puts it, utter woke nonsense. Yep. Uh, no, but uh, of course, the next talking point was the red card for Bruno Fernandes. And, okay, I I have thoughts about this. I want to start with you guys. Gantil, let's start with you. Was that a red card or not? It was high, but it was not a red it was okay. high, but I don't think it was a it red. It was not a red at all. It was I think it was a red because of his reaction. Oh. And that is the problem. Because you can't... I mean, I know you're frustrated. And a lot of people have spoken about how whiny Bruno Fernandes is. How he's always complaining and this and that and the other. Personally, for me, I don't mind that from the captain. It just shows that he has a lot of passion. He's showing like... He wants to affect the game in a way that only a captain can, especially considering the new rule is that self captain referees about it. So I don't mind that, honestly. I start minding it when his actual game gets fucked, which has been happening. And also when he reacts like that after a tackle like that. Like, yeah, sure, he slipped. It was not his fault. He went in for a tackle, he's lost his footing, and that's why the foot went high and it caught James Madison. But then apologize. No, just point out the fact that you slipped. Yeah. Don't go like, I did do I did do Like, don't do that. No, but no, I, I, I honestly think it was really sad and tragic. Not that I think United would have won had he been on pitch. I really don't think that would have happened. Uh, but I think it would have been just nice that if he got yelled at for being a bad player, Rather than, oh, he got sent off unfairly and he was being petulant. Yeah. Um, no, but it, but that that completely fucked up the balance of the game because like like we discussed earlier, after that, Kobe Mino was taken off for Mason Mount. And uh, Ganti, what scam player did you give us? Fucking hell, dude. Again, like... It, uh, he, I, I'm going to go, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, so, it, took it took me around... Three to five, seven months probably to get over the transfer of Mason moving to United because he was my star boy at Chelsea. Uh, like I'm like, two hum ka vice captain banega, Reese James jo hospital mein baitta, wo captain banega, and y'all are going to be JT and Lampard for us for the next ten years. So that transfer hurt a lot. To the fact that half my passwords for things which are not important are Mason Mount types. ठीक है? मतलब दुख पहुँचा मेरे को, बहुत ज़्यादा दुख पहुँचा. And now watching this and watching how he's doing at United, Sorry, I love it. Is the password yeah. for the important stuff Reese James? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what we have to do to hack into your Axis Bank credit card? <laughs> what do we mean now? It's actually like, Axis Bank. <laughs> <laughs> and soon we'll find out it's actually Reese James 19 or something. <laughs> वेरी हार्ड but yaar end product hi nahi he just keeps running around he ah. is known as the most earnest pressing player in this united squad when he when we're doing the high press he is one of the highest players who is actually pressing the opposition defense and all and i'm like great bahut sahi hai he is basically the manager's kya? dream he's a manager's ah. dream he's a workhorse but par end us, product nahi par uske aage kya end product hi nahi uska he is not been involved in any goal scoring opportunities at all from an assist point of view or a, or a goal point of view he's not done that and <laughs> i feel like jo bhi rees james ka injury se that has been contagious on to mason mount because he's constantly injured yeah i've barely seen him play to be honest yeah he's, and to add to that united gave him the number 7 jersey i'm like oh god <laughs> guys honestly now you do you do you now do you now realize why jaden sancho and more on him later was pissed off with you guys yeah and also like, i think i've seen more hairstyles than assists goal involvements clean yeah. sheets 
put yeah. together. <laughs> I love just... it, guys. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I mean... I'll tell you why I love it because when Mason Mount signed for uh, United, there were a couple of. So obviously, the big complaint about Liverpool and from Liverpool fans is that fuck, where are the signings? There's never been any signing for the last however long, right? And mm. when Mason Mount went, they're like, "Are at least sign Mason Mount?" And now I'm like. <laughs> Wow, vindicated, dude! Yeah, all the fans yeah. should apologize. Yeah, so well done, I thank mean, you. I think lots of apologies are also in order for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because a lot of uh, United fans are now talking about stacking Eric Ten Hag and possibly bringing Solskjaer back. Who has also said, and in his words, he doesn't words, mind. Yeah, if if the family calls me, <laughs> then I don't mind. I'm like Ole, I love you. You're a very nice guy. Don't call them family, dude. Like, ye LinkedIn post hai. How many LinkedIn influencers have spoken? If an employer says they are your family, it's a red flag because. And I'm like, ha, United are not your family. Don't say that in you know fucking interviews when you're asked about this when you're not even associated with Man United anymore. That oh, if the family calls back, unless of course he's talking about the Glazers. in which case that's even worse because why the fuck would you want any of them to call you they don't matter anymore so to speak but uh, what what are your thoughts boys like tenag in or out and don't give me that answer no no it's better for all the other clubs if tenag stays logically speaking see logically tenag in speaking out. tenag in right because mog see what do you want as a fan you would not want plastic fans right yeah. so you want your akarshas basically yeah. the guys who stick yeah. through thin <laughs> not the thick <laughs> thin. <laughs> right so currently yeah. i feel like there are still a lot more united vines plastic key ones to so i think you need to be thinner yeah. right really become size the size zero for a premier league club It really reach the brink and the bottom be the thinnest and yeah. then you can fire him and hopefully by then I don't know. Maybe Zidane wants to come, and he's grown hair by then, or yeah. you know, or maybe Jabi Alonso by then has become a superstar manager, lost his team, changed football, and then he'll come to United. But until <laughs> I then, I don't think Jabi Alonso is coming to United because of his Liverpool connections. Although it would be all, great just to see your reaction to that news if it were. I think happen. I felt so betrayed last season that he didn't come that I'm like, it's, I already know it, so I'm good. But yeah, I think so. I think that's so. just for saying, Muki. If you saw Alonso at United, you would have a meltdown. I think yeah. every United fan, I mean, every Liverpool fan I know, would also have a meltdown. Yeah, I'd be Absolutely. like Akash. What is this Liverpool that you speak yeah. of? Yeah. Is it the si- is it the place where Everton exists? <laughs> <laughs> it is the place where Xabi Alonso used to play football before. You know, he decided to manage Manchester United. No, that's never going to happen. I don't think it's ever going to happen. And if it does. The world has gone absolutely fucking mental, even more mental than the fact that Man United are eleventh or twelfth in the league right now. I mean, just oh fuck! The Believe only the, the only big six, the conventional big six club, to not be in the big six. I can say that for once as a Chelsea fan in three years. So let me just go about and say that. you have to enjoy. You have to enjoy this time because United are absolutely fucked. I do still think that Eric Ten Hag should stay in because if you change the manager again, it's going to be the same thing all over. Yeah. A lot of the problems arise because there is still player power in this club, right? Like, and that has been the problem when it came to Mourinho. That has been the problem when it came to Solskjaer. That has been the problem when it came to David Moyes as well. Of course, David Moyes had the problem of being David Moyes, but player power has has Absolutely grown in Man United, and this coming from a club that was once managed by Ferguson, where you didn't have any like players had no power. <laughs> like there was absolutely none. It was a straight up dictatorship. कुछ नहीं था democracy. अभी बहुत ही बहुत बहुत ज़्यादा player power हो गया. And I feel like if the owners stick with Ten Hag, then the players will also get the message that यार this guy is not going to go. Otherwise, players must be thinking that oh, we will outlive the manager. हम लोग नहीं खेलेंगे बराबर वॉट इज गोइन मैनेज इज गोइंग टू गेट दू विल कम इन हू वी मे प्रॉबली लाइक बट देन इट गोज इन टू दैट सेम साइकिल कौन आएगा सिमियोन इंजागी आएगा वो भी सेम होगा सो यूट स्टिक बाय और डू यू गेट वन मोर फेलो एंड स्टिक टू द्यू गाय But no, I, I feel, I feel, option. no, yeah. I feel like you have to stick with Tanag, and I feel that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to stick oh, with Tanag no, because please, if you no. take, if you take, if you take all the nonsense opinions from United fans and the generally nonsense opinions from Liverpool fans like Mukesh out of the equation, 
this season in his third season at man united tenag squad has looked like they know what the plan is now of course nobody of us knows what this fucking plan is but while watching them it does look like they have a plan if you look at every other team like let's take chelsea for example chelsea under maresca also playing well and we'll come to them in a second but chelsea under maresca play extremely high paced football great to watch as a neutral yeah. like it's it's chaos theory 101 kuch bhi ho sakta hai they are going all out attack postecoglou spurs also have a similar way in football which is just fucking straight up खेलो भैंचो भागो और खेलो डोंट गिव देम अट टू रेस्ट दीज अप्रोच आई फील आर नॉट सस्टेनेबल इन द लॉन्ग टर्म एंड वीव सीन लॉट्स ऑफ क्लब्स फॉल्टर एट दैट क्लॉप लिवरपूल वॉज एबल टू मैनेज दैट इन अ वेरी वेरी डेलीकेट वे विद गिग इन प्रेस बट नॉट ऑल क्लब्स कैन डू दैट एंड आई फील लाइक चेल्सी और स्पर्स का बहुत जल्दी बर्न आउट होने वाला है टेना ऑन दी अदर एंड if you actually properly see the games and i know how depressing and boring that can be but trust me follow it for 90 minutes ek plan dikhega which is tanak teams like to control the pace of the game they like to dominate possession they like to control the pace of the game when they want they want to slow it down when they want they want to speed it up and i feel like that is the way to go it is a clear plan the players are also buying into it it's just that there's too many individual errors If there's one criticism that I have of Tenag, is that he is not coaching the players to be better. I'm not seeing any evidence of that. None of the players that are there have been coached into becoming better players. And the example that I'll give is Arne Slot. He's come in. He's got Klopp's team essentially with just the addition of Federico Chiesa, but he's still making that work. Tenag has got a bunch of his own players from his contacts at Ajax, but he's not able to coach them into this system that he's trying to build. That's the one criticism. but i still feel you have to stick with it law of averages things will turn around it's a long season like we said it's a marathon not a sprint uh, fingers crossed for the next one so oh, now mm. this i feel like you said about... wait, wait i'm sorry for all yeah. the let's take away the nonsense <coughs> opinions of um, liverpool fans like mukesh around he exactly voiced my opinion which is ten hagen <laughs> ha but your ten hagen has malicious intent to behind it <laughs> Your Ten Hag in is because ah, maza aata hai. Man United ऐसे खेलते हैं चित्ते की तरह. That is your intent, no? <laughs> so you do agree that the said sentiment is true? No, yeah, your sentiment is true. I'm saying this is the logical sentiment for Ten Hag. Okay. Oh, yeah. We both want the same outcome for very different reasons. Yeah. Yes, so please. is Ten Hag a good coach? Is he a good man manager and a good coach? For example, even Klopp has said this, right? Even if I bought a player for eighty million. or how much have you all bought sancho for i would work with him rather than for example okay this is a very short period of a mo- short period of time but three games at chelsea he's got three assists he looks good he's got a man of the match award he went back to dortmund right yeah, yeah two so of his a yeah. minute sorry two of his three assists yeah. were basic passes near the half line okay so you can't really call them assists they were not goal creating chances that nico jackson goal in the previous game jackson did more of the work i feel like fpl maybe jackson ko hi khud ka assist milna chahiye tha uske liye i think unhone kuch ghanta de kiya i think unhone kuch nahi kiya but but, but yes. it looks like he's having a better time he's happy he's taunting united and all that but overall like the fact that you bought a player for this amount of money wouldn't it be better to like guide him which you've not seen that from ten hag or but as wo, you said for other players also but wo to kya hai he's done that he's tried to guide uh, sancho also sancho had mental health issues he needed time off ten hag personally gave him time off he told him to go away from the country do his own rehabilitation program they got a trainer for him specifically to work with him through that extended time off away from the club came back refreshed so to speak but after point how many chances the manager is going to give a player if the player right. is not responding in training and we again don't know exactly what happened and if you read the athletic and you read insider accounts sancho was actually not training well he his head was just not in the game and that could be for whatever reason now you've tried yeah. to help him to the best of your ability but after a point you have to think of the team as well so he called him out now one could say that maybe you should not have called him out in public and you know done all of this behind closed doors or whatever but at the end of the day he is dutch he is a blunt guy and that's what he's going to do i feel like sancho shouldn't have reacted the way he reacted but you know it's oh, 100% it, i, I yeah, feel yeah, like 100%. it is it is sancho's fault you if you want to be in the good books of your manager of your boss you perform well and this happens in every job don't whether you're a fucking multi millionaire football player or if you're a fucking ca 
तू अगर बॉस को इम्प्रेस नहीं करेगा तो तेरी गार्ड है ना लाइक यू आर गोइंग टू बी फायर्ड यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट अ प्रमोशन यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट एन अप्रेजल तो अगर वो बराबर से काम नहीं कर रहा है डे एन एंड डे आउट सो वाई शुड ही वाई शुड ही बी गिविन एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ प्रेफरेंशियल ट्रीटमेंट आफ्टर अ पॉइंट even when he was playing it's not like he was making too much of a difference in fact what basic passes that he is doing for chelsea wasn't able to do that also yeah we were promised that jaden sancho is such a technically gifted player he can take players on kya take on kiya usne in fact i feel like he brought marcus rashford down to his level <laughs> after <laughs> before before sancho came into the team rashford used to do elasticos and nutmegs and step overs used to take the player on he had scintillating pace Sancho आने के बाद रैशवर्ड को मतलब now he's losing the ball to he's losing the ball to <laughs> end of end what a heavy <laughs> touch that was he's unable to just like get the ball to stick to his feet so, yeah because after yeah. he lost the ball rashford is just jogging in that thin same direction instead of just on a run back and make something yeah. happen so yeah. now is that a sancho problem like obviously this is a joke you know, but is that a ten hag problem now about rashford yeah about rashford i mean again man like i feel like it it It, there's something definitely not working now. There is an entirely new coaching setup at Man United. Uh, McLaren and Van der Gaag have left. Apparently, the team had some problems with Van der Gaag because if they think that Eric Ten Hag is blunt, Van der Gaag was worse. Uh, yeah. And uh, for whatever reason, they've both left. And you've got Ruud van Nistelrooy, who's one of the most deadliest finishers in Man United's history. And the irony is that none of the players can fucking finish a goal. you know it's 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 crazy so there is a new coaching setup now you would expect things to get better but they haven't so i guess it's still a question Ten of Hagen. time and again for sure for sure so what can he do better like where's the problem like if you're saying ten hagen matlab kuch to plan hai ki possession football theek hai khel rahe sab theek hai so it's the finishing which chelsea had the issue last year basically yeah yeah it is that and we found out that uh, you know the players have it in them of course a change of coach was what was needed for that but again my only thing is you've just given him a contract extension what is the point in sacking him now you're going to have to pay through your, it it will be a bad financial and business decision which has been the case of the glazer ownership we want to see change under ratcliffe right yeah. so you have to start with these decisions do you think like and they've also in the off season had interviews with thomas tuchel and other managers and then decided no tenag is the right man for the job tenag khud ke khud se bola hai ki yeah I, i don't care if they talk to other people at the end of the day they realize that i'm the right man for the job so you have shown that level of support for this guy you've given him three extra years on his contract now to sack him six games in it makes you as an owner look like a complete idiot B it completely derails all the plans that have been put in place. Sure you have a director of football now you have that sort of leadership structure put in place so a change of manager shouldn't really be too much of a concern. Par usko sack karke laoge kisko? You yeah. know like it, it, there's no good manager that's available. Nagelsmann I would have liked but Nagelsmann's with Germany he's not going to leave leave the Germany national team job. Simeone Inzaghi sure Inter ke sath kya kiya usne like It's not if you're going to get somebody of a Simeone Inzaghi level, then why not stick with Ten Hag? I feel like they're on the same level in terms of managers who can have ideas and do have potential, but they're not established established yet. But if you're getting somebody like uh, a Nagelsmann, then yeah, that I can you know vouch for. Thomas Tuchel again, we've seen what he's done at Chelsea, we've seen what he's done at PSG. Two years fallout, he's gone. He's he's the next Mourinho. you're not going to get any longevity out of it you want a manager who can set the tone for this team and i feel like tenag is still the guy for the job but i don't think there are any managers who are going to be there long time anymore wo that was zamana that wo zamana gaya wo zamana absolutely gaya absolutely gaya but by long time i mean at least 5 saal to ho jaye ha ha theek like let's take klops tenure at liverpool as the bar right now pep and klop 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 spent what nine seasons but that no Nine season, I feel like that is still extra. Like, I w- I would still say five years is now. What a a, a manager who's considered good by a club has, in the sense right. that roughly you have a start, a peak, and then a fall. 
Right. Right. Roughly, that's what happens. Uh, yeah, I Pep. Was... If you are listening to the corner of like, get the fuck out of city, man. We're yeah, fuck off. Yeah, more than that, man. Oh yeah, bald ball fraud, Mikal, yar. <laughs> there is only space for one bald fraud in the Premier League, and that is. <laughs> He's at the other <laughs> <laughs> But let's yeah, let's let's talk about Mareska and Chelsea because fuck man, Chelsea what third in the league now? Fourth, I think. Yeah, fourth? third or fourth. Huh, fourth. We are I one mean, point so behind Arsenal. They, they, they're playing really well. Again, another victory for them uh, over West Ham. This time I think it was four two. Sorry, against Brighton. Four two yeah. against Brighton. Uh, they're doing really well. Another assist for Jaden Sancho, the man that we were talking about. Dante, what what has changed? Like. It two started assists. off. We we started the season. Oh, two assists. Mm, two assists. You won the penalty also. Amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fucking rub it in. Rub it in, man. Jale pe le lo itna sara namak aur chidko. Yeah, that is the yeah. But uh, no, like we started the season laughing at Chelsea. Like, oh, they've got the entire population of the world into their training ground. How are they going to fit all these players? Mareska's comments were slightly odd where he was like, oh, I don't deal with all the players. I only deal with the 21 that I want to work with. The rest don't even come here and all of that. He's very open about talking uh, about the Sterling transfer. Yeah, he's not going to get minutes. Chilwell's not going to get minutes. Chuku Mecca can fuck off. Yeah, I, his word, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This was, this was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it seemed a little weird, but for some reason, they're fucking doing well dude what 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 is the secret sauce and can we have some of it please at man united so see now again i think last week muki was saying this unpopular opinion but i think chelsea did well last year too these yeah. same bunch of idiots couldn't just put the ball in the back of the net yeah. that was the difference last year and this time you see palmer's so we have three players who have scored a hat trick in eight games like a palmer scored a hat trick and cuckoo scored a hat trick madueke has scored a hat trick yeah. So, and also Mareska has been very clear about this. He's like, the people who are not playing with us, y'all are not even training with us. Tum log niklo. Example, our vice captain, Chilwell, he just threw him out in the corner and he came into the squad again last week mm. because he couldn't get another club. Mm. So, he has 22, 23 players and he's very happy with that. And he's made it very clear who are the backups for whom also. Mm. In our attacking positions, we know exactly who our attackers are. So Jackson is our main striker and Cuckoo's backup. I'm surprised that you know exactly who your attackers are because I don't think anybody else knows. Who is it? And Kungu? I'll be honest. I'll be honest. The only reason Pedro I know Neto? the score is... He said 22, so I hit 22. I don't know who he is. Bark is up out of syllabus. Hai. Out of syllabus. Hai. Ye log hai, mujhe bhi nahi pata. Ah. I'm like Poch last year when someone, I think someone asked Poch, who is this? Person? What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> Malang like, sir. Malang sir it was. Poch is like, who is this? I'm yeah. the same apart from this 22. Who is this? What is the difference? So he has players in like, for a leg, left wing. He has a 100 million ka mudrik, which is a backup. Hai. Sancho's first choice. Yeah. Right wing, we have NATO and Madueke. So million ka backup. Fuck, dude. Mm. So million ka backup. It's very specific. So million ka backup, who we fought Arsenal for and took him, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. 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 It's okay. We gave them Sterling. We are fine. We've yeah. been fleecing our... This this year, we've fleeced a lot of people. Yeah. So many people you've fleeced. And not just this year. Over the last few years, I think. Yeah, yeah. You've I fleeced think Man United... Arsenal. Yeah, uh, you may have. We still don't know how Sterling going to play for Arsenal, so you oh. may have fleeced Arsenal. You have definitely fleeced the income tax officer. So <laughs> you know, yeah. bahut sara jhol jamela kiya hai Chelsea. Like they used to, be, it's like fleeced has become the fleece. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, fleece James. <laughs> Okay, on that note, that fucker is one of our highest paid players. He's our captain. Uh-huh. And he has not played 90 minutes in 540 days. This is a stat I saw on Instagram and I muted that account. I'm like, no, 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 no. salary slip dekha hai kya? What is his salary breakdown and how much of it goes into hospital bills? <laughs> so, wo dekhna baut important hai. True, true. Um, but yeah, so yeah, again, like, great victory for Chelsea. They seem like they could really be within a shoe in for the top four place. If they get top four, I think it'll be one of the stories of the season. Like, can we? Can we? Really, is it can, really? Can we say dark horse? And we spent a billion, bro. Yeah, yeah, but over ten years or whatever your amortization 
situation is yeah. no yeah I, i know what you mean like historically is, chelsea okay. are okay, big let's, six let's, top okay, club okay let's let's do this okay there is no way ever a clubs like i'm including liverpool so clubs like liverpool chelsea man city chelsea to cream right are ever going to be underdogs now within the top 6 or the richest 6 the current underdog status probably head heads out to united in in one way and liverpool in the other way liverpool cuz they're in sign players spurs, no spurs come on bro spurs no man no? spurs have also spent a bunch of money like they it's not like they're poor like like united are united would be underdogs cuz they're shit right yeah. and liverpool <laughs> would be underdogs cuz it's like they didn't buy any players and they're in transition which is not really an excuse to be even but again if you just whatever Buddy, so Liverpool are not in transition. I have you seen also, the results? What y'all showed up? What third last season? What y'all were third? Last season. What Man United? Liverpool, Liverpool, yeah, third, Liverpool, third. Liverpool, Liverpool were third. You can't fucking call yourselves underdogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is like this is like you. Are, this is saying. like you calling Virgil van Dijk a bargain. Eighty million. I'm not saying Liverpool. I'm, I'm saying none of the top six are underdogs. But if you do a mini league in the top six. Even then, by a stretch, there are only two teams in the top six. There can only be yeah. two teams that could be underdogs. Not yeah. even Tottenham. I don't consider Tottenham because Tottenham have spent a lot of money and they've done a lot of tran- transfers. Yeah. They went out for Dominic Solanke, which we'll get yeah. to in a bit. But only United, United possession and Liverpool because they're in transition. That's it. Yeah. Literally, that's the only two teams within the top six that could be underdogs. But in the large picture of things. Underdog is still Ipswich. <laughs> like you know, like yeah. that's yeah. who underdogs are. I swear, the in one of the. Teams who finished top six last year, Aston Villa sitting and saying, "क्या बोल रहे हो यार तुम लोग?" हमारे बारे में कोई बात क्यों नहीं करता? Real underdog right here. That's true. That is the real underdog. Like I forgot they were in the Champions League. When I was setting my team, I realized, oh shit, I have to bother about Watkins and midweek and all this. That's Dude, when I realized they're in the Champions League. Man, yeah. I, I think they're going to Bayern Munich or either or Bayern yeah, Munich yeah, is coming yeah. too. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. let's fucking go, dude. Yeah, all bad, Watkins in matched up. Matched up. Chelsea Twitter account also posted a picture of Jadon Sancho looking uh, happy after United lost, like a smiling Jadon Sancho. Dude, he, retweet, he retweeted that after after he as soon as United lost, he retweeted Chelsea's six nil or six four or whatever that was. Yeah. Of course, four two. Of course, course he stuff. did. Yeah, <laughs> and this is why I'm very happy. Get get all the 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 tap in assists that you want, the assists the <laughs> that are not assists that you want. That paddock. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's only game week six, like we said again yeah, earlier on in the show. It is a marathon. वो इतना हगने वाला है ना. Like when he started at United, also he was like, oh cool, step overs and all, ah huh? very nice, left wing, amazing, taking man on and all. And then we realized what happened. So it will come. It will definitely come. Now, so he's in London also, so he's closer to home. Yeah, he's yeah. going to go off the rails so quickly, you know. It's going I mean, to be amazing. Your hundred million backup is not going to stay a backup for a very long time. Is what I'm trying to tell you. So, yeah, uh, mount right. for a Sancho. Well done. <laughs> also, by in talk of fleecing our uh, uh, opponents or other rivals, dude, forty million for Cole Palmer. Are you two hundred million? Le, yar, uske le. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But forty million Man City ke liye, matlab kya hai? Like, ha, wo bhi. Wo un log ka backup. नहीं वो उनका सीएसआर है यार वो उनका चैरिटी है मैं हेल्प एज इंडिया को एनुअल डोनेशन देता हूँ वो चेल्सी को एनुअली कोल पामर देते हैं और आर्सनल को मिकेल आर टेटा देते हैं वो उनका चैरिटी केस है उनको टैक्स रिफंड मिलता है बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द बेस्ट नेचुरल एबिलिटी एंड बींग कम्प्लीटली एम टी अपस्टेज सो एम टी उसको देख के लगता है वो डेज फेस इज डेट एक्सिलेंट that's excellent for him that's excellent like, yeah exactly and, and this this is the tweet that said like what a lethal attribute it must be where you have nothing in your head like your head is so empty that bold. it can only focus and you know completely think about putting the ball in the back of the net aur yeah. kuch nahi hai uske dimag mein what nothing. an elite athlete attribute that must be 
like none usko of his... ke lagta hai is he's blank he's just yeah. blank in anything Completely. any of his interviews he just comes off as ha ah, theek hai joke ho yeah. raha hai yeah i don't know i don't know yeah. maybe what what i don't know like, i don't know no that's tension, the basis of his no base. nervousness yeah. nothing not <laughs> no iq nothing <laughs> absolutely nothing let's talk about liverpool quickly then wolves won liverpool to arne slot is doing well even though it is klopp's team or is he doing well because it is klopp's team at this point i have no answers and i'm just like everybody stay calm <laughs> everybody stay calm because <laughs> we don't know what's working i mean it's only six games in but um yeah uh, i think the team even when they make mistakes they seem calmer i think he seems to be a guy who's i think my my criticism of klopp especially in the second half of his tenure was always that he plays the emotion too much like mm. he's always like do it put your blood do it for the city do it for the club which i don't know i don't think that's the sort of stuff that motivates new players right uh, i think new players just like to be like what is my purpose conduct me like an orchestra person tell me what to yeah. do and tell me what to do repeatedly uh, yeah. whereas klopp was a little more i think he was from that ferguson wenger era where you want to motivate players give them a passionate talk and th- i think nowadays players are like just tell me why it doesn't matter rather than why it matters and probably slot is because i think even after the game i think uh, konate was like oh i should have been the man of the match and when they told slot this he was like did he forget that he let a goal in <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> and then he was like i know we did well but uh, it's still we still let a goal against um, well, i think nottingham so he's like you know we're not good we're not good enough yet you know there's no legacy even 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 trying to sing all he tells me is what i can what i did well what i can improve on and that's it Nothing. He's not a shit talker. He's to the point. He let you. Your work is done. You finish it and get out. But yeah, that's yeah. the thing about. But that, uh. that's that's just the Dutch way, you know. Like the Dutch are very very straightforward, and that's why the the national team keeps imploding because they are all very very straightforward with each other. There is no <laughs> political correctness. So obviously there's fights and infighting between them. Much like now recently, Ronald Koeman and Steven Bergwijn के साथ जो हुआ. Oh yeah. Like it is it is just a a classic example of Dutch people being Dutch. My question is: You have Arne Slot, bald Dutch manager, on one side. You have Eric Ten Hag, bald Dutch manager, on the other side. Both straight talkers, both very, very blunt to their players. Now, this exactly what you're saying, Trent. Tell, Trent saying that Arne Slot just tells me what I need to do, what I can do better, what I didn't do so well. After some point, he is going to need a little bit of a cuddle, you no, know, from his manager. Thoda, I say, love and stroking of the back is going to be needed. You no, know, thoda, man management is going to be needed. What happens then? Um, so I guess they've not come to that because right now they're doing well. Unlike United, where it's already required, yeah. or it's been required last year and this year. Yeah. Or Roger Ten Hag नहीं कर पा रहा है. Yeah. Slot is not gotten there yet. Like let's see after like three losses or like two losses, then see what happens. Like for example, even when Trent when he was taken off a couple of games ago, he was quite pissed. Yeah. He was going. He was talking to Slot, and there was yeah. like like उधर चल रहा था. बातें चल रहे थे उनके. Yeah. yeah. Whatever was happening. So let's see how things are then. Like maybe he's the I don't know anything about Slot's history, so I don't know if he's the guy who'll go put his arm around the other guy's shoulder and saying, "So what's going on? Sab theek hai." Yeah, so I know. He I, doesn't come off. Yeah. He doesn't come off as that guy at yeah. all. So we'll see. But the, the fact of the matter is, he's he's quietly going about the business. Only one loss, yeah. which was against Forest, which was nice. it's looking more and more like an anomaly than you know the the norm. No, so, and guys, well. like I said, remember well. just one thing: ten games later, last season, Tottenham were on top of the league, and there were articles coming out in BBC and the Guardian saying is Ange Postecoglou the savior that the <laughs> Premier League and the Tot and Tottenham needed. And then where did they finish? Outside the top five. Bro, so, but it's Tottenham at yeah. the end of the day. Oh, it's yeah. bro, it's Spurs. Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> nahi yaar you can't say that anymore yeah, you, you can't, can't say that you can't dude. say that anymore after klopp has come in and after arteta has come in arsenal and liverpool fans and them themselves they need to stop thinking of themselves as an underdog yeah like y'all are the teams to beat yeah no but i tell you what that would have made sense had we See, guys, Arsenal. So don't even mention. Ah, until now, in fact, I would say slow. I would say Ten Hag is a better manager than Arteta. Only because proof. What is it? Five years. Five years you stayed at this club. What have you won? Last time you won, you won something with Aubameyang. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Last time Arteta won something. I'm saying something. It was with Aubameyang. Correct. 
<laughs> we i'm saying for all the thing of saying oh liverpool and arsenal liverpool won the premier league sure they came second they came second way more often than they won i agree i'll take it which made that definitely means klopp wasn't the best manager of his generation even i will take that right because we lived in a pep era and for what if until proven guilty you city are champions right mm. until city is damned until that second place because a second and liverpool gets the trophies you take it give it to pep but i'm in for all and by the way arteta has been there for five seasons people forget that it, arteta didn't start last season or two he's yeah. five seasons yeah. ago he started yeah. there is not a single trophy that's come their way not a single trophy by klopp's fourth season we had won the champions league and the premier league and come second in the champions league and the premier league Right. Okay, I'm just letting you know. By the end of next year, if the way City's 115 charges are going, Arsenal could have two Premier League titles. Then yeah. the Liverpool will also have two Premier Leagues. That is true. So, but also, also see, I'm just saying, this episode got real. Mil gaya apne ko. Ah, <laughs> <take> to <laughs> okay, Arsenal see, fans are going to have a meltdown in the comments very, very shortly. <laughs> if you are saying that, but, but I'm saying, what am I saying? Wrong? I'm just saying, you, how can a manager be? Like up there, he's, he's he's no, but he's up there because of vibes, no. Like Mookie, the vibes correct. are great. You're hundred percent correct because see, when I have to make this argument with an Arsenal fan, no, as a Chelsea fan, this is the one thing I say. I'm like, come on, no, we have four managers switch and the last five years we have won Champions League. Yeah. Okay. You all have just stuck to that one guy and overall have won nothing. Yeah. And you signed but... incredible players, by the way. It's not like there's some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this is not, by the way, it is not some Wenger region, Mourinho region. Nothing. They have signed, signing Declan Rice, poaching him away from uh, West Ham was not some. Oh, uh, we spotted a young Cesc Fabregas. None of that. We went to La Masia and got a guy. We took a guy who was already destined for greatness. Uske paas three options tha. Ab chaat Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City. Right, and he chose Arsenal because that's the bet he wanted to take on his career or go abroad, whatever. Right, that is the bet that they've taken. And similarly, if you take a list of all the other players that they've signed, right, whether it's signing Gabriel Jesus for I don't know what reason, <laughs> right, right, or Manchester City charity, charity quota, charity yeah. quota. <laughs> yeah, like you know, I have no idea. So they have signed uh, Kai Havertz again from Chelsea. That was the original fleece, James. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> For he's what? doing well, yeah. He's doing well, though. He's, he's doing, doing well, well, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Oh, yeah. He's doing very well. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm saying even if at the end of the season they win the Premier League, completed zero not... passes against Man City last weekend, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's completed zero passes against Man City. Exactly. He's doing well. He's doing very well. Even at the end of the season, even if they win the Premier League, it still won't make him enough because, like, you still have to. What are you competing with? Ah, sorry. Now I'm done. Okay, no, so fair you know, point. Fair point. Mukhi, see, my whole point about Arsenal, I mean, uh, Arteta not living up to the potential of winning what he needs to after all these amazing things and all. Okay, agree. My issue with that statement you made was you compared him to Ten Hag and said Aray, Ten but, Hag was the better. But man. Ten Hag has won two trophies. Ten Hag in two seasons. Been, in two seasons, correct. He's won. He's and he's won. He, and uh, to hello, I mean, I Wait, know what he, has he won again. Carling, no. Carling, I think he F. beat Man F. City F. in the final. Uh-huh. Of course, oh, he won yeah, over yeah, yeah, and correct, drunk. Correct, correct. But still, credit where it's due, he fucking beat Man City. Yeah, yeah, correct, he correct, correct. beat Liverpool, right? He beat Liverpool and Man City on the way and he won the cup. So, credit where it's due, somehow he did something with Maguire playing striker and that other guy playing left back. Somehow he did something. Now, what he did, no one knows and he doesn't know. Yeah, I think he was playing Anthony that was or something left back. Yeah. Maybe that yeah, was the yeah. magic that even he didn't know what he was doing. So, even Klopp was like, what do I do now? That was like, who do I mark? I'm not going to fucking mark Maguire. <laughs> like, like, dude, I, like, I can't mark Maguire, dude. That's not my career. Messi is praising me. Haaland is praising me and I'm here marking Maguire. <laughs> you can't. If, you, if, you're, if you're Bruce Lee and you're put up in a fight against like this rowdy, like, mentally deranged dude who doesn't follow any rules and just goes at it. Yeah. Bruce Lee will also be like, bro, what do I do? Where is my yeah. Kung Fu going to? Exactly. What do I do? Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, and I, well, I think the equation I have always maintained on this podcast is FA Cup plus Carling Cup is one big trophy. Right? FA Cup plus hmm. Carling Cup, it's some, I don't know why, it just seems like if you win both, you won big one trophy. So, in my head, Ten Hag has won one big cup. Arteta has come second multiple times. Which is also a big cup for for yeah. uh, for Arsenal. Yeah. And, yeah. So uh, I'm sorry, 
I it's also the, ironically the joke that Arsenal fans have for Spurs fans. Hey, you guys though are never there. Your 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 trophy is beating Arsenal at home trophy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, buddy, your trophy is uh, not uh, defeating Man City trophy. <laughs> So, yeah, Arsenal, is, isn't it Arsenal fans also who celebrate that Saint Tottenham whatever day? Tottenham the, yeah. day. It's the yeah, day yeah, they, they celebrate our... that when they finish. What kind of fucking celebration is that? <laughs> yeah. That is the that is the real trophy, guys. That is the yeah. real trophy that we should all be aspiring to. Finally, before we go, let's quickly talk about Man City dropping points as well. They went to St. James's Park, 1-1 against Newcastle. Josco Guardiol got a goal. Uh, uh, to open the scoring for Man City. Again, Ben Chol, Haaland should have done something for us. Did nothing. Jack Grealish assist and Josco Guardiol goal. That helped nobody in FPL. We nobody. picked Rico Lewis, no? You also picked Lewis, no? No, no I didn't pick oh, You didn't pick Lewis? I switched last moment. The Guardiol also my Lewis guy because I got team news that this fucker was starting. Ah, Worst mistake ever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There we go. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it was Anthony Gordon who got the penalty. Edison uh, uh, knocking him over in the box and getting a yellow card for his troubles. And uh, Newcastle United held on for a 1-1 draw. The lack of Rodri in that midfield, is that going to bother them as the season goes on? Because now this is, not to forget, Man City's second draw in uh, in a row. So, they've dropped a total of four points over two game weeks. 100%. There is a written thing over last year. If you see the games with Rodri and without Rodri, yeah. there is a 100% difference in how they play, how they are defensively and everything. I think this is the best year for either Liverpool or Arsenal to well win the oh, title. I'm, okay. I'm not counting oh, United Aston and Chelsea Villa. here yet. Are Ast- to... <laughs> Ast- yeah, the thing is, you know, you know the thing is, no, when when things like this happen, like Mookie was talking about this last season, like last season Man City looked like they were gettable and then Liverpool was on a you know downward trajectory. Yeah. I think it's even more similar with Man United. Whenever the top team like take this weekend. As a as a litmus test, right? Whenever every other team looks like they're going to drop points, Aston Villa were held uh, mm. uh, to a draw as well. They are also playing well. They were held to a draw. Uh, Man City were held to a draw. Uh, all these all these teams were were not playing well. United did have a chance to go up the table, especially because they were playing Tottenham, who they're level on points with, or they were level on points well, with. Oh. When everything is in their favor, no Man United would be like, "Arey par aise kaise?" Like it's just every time the universe conspires and says, No, no, we will make everything work well for you. No, no, universe, we are fine. We will make everything work for everybody else. That is the united way. Yeah, but City, they do look they it, it's very possible for someone to beat City this year, especially without Rodri. And yeah. this is it, it, there's a very big difference in the you way you say this, and then uh. they'll get that Matthew Nunes and Savino to and Guardiol to be what John Stones and Grealish and all were, I think, a couple of seasons ago. And then it'll be like the same thing again. They're like, wow, they just did it. Guardiol, if Savino had to do something, it better fucking had been this week because he was my wild punt on FPL. Shoot, <laughs> played 10 minutes. My other wild punt <laughs> was Sancho, and I didn't trust my own team. <laughs> but uh, also. Yeah, speaking of Jack Grealish, Jack Grealish got whacked. Did yeah. you see that? Uh, was it? Did he get whacked in his nuts? Or I did he get whacked in his stomach? I think, I think it was, think it was a little stomach. above his nuts. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it was like yeah. little above. Yeah. Like. All, all the leg day, all those calves are not coming to help you now, are they, Jack? <laughs> thoda come leg day, thoda more core exercises, bro. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Look at me saying this, Joe. Which I think my no say gym nahi gaya. I'm saying Jack Grealish ko bol raha leg day na kare. Italy mein pass pass kar raha tha. This is yeah, exactly. This is the beauty of the corner flag like, because uh, obviously we know that Jack Grealish listens to uh, the podcast, so we will get to that. Um, but yeah, considering this is one of City's worst years, or this is the golden opportunity for other teams to to come in, is it going to be Arsenal because they are uh, as it stands second in the league, uh, or or just behind Man City? I think Liverpool are top. Uh, but the war of words between Guardiola and Mikel Arteta continues uh, uh, from last week uh, because uh, uh, Mikel Arteta said, I know what goes on there. And uh, Guardiola was like, uh, Mikel needs to be a little more clear about what he thinks. Because everybody was thinking, oh, he knows about the 115 charges. Mm. Uh, but uh, Mikel said, no, no, I was talking about how they react after dropping points. Point. And uh, Guardiola also said, uh, if you want war, now we war. 
this is by the way something was not on my bingo card i expecting these two to fight because yeah. they were so friendly after every game they go all hugs and are yeah. hi bye chal let's go have a drink no yeah. i didn't now expect the, this happening it is a case of now the padawan has become the master is he eh? is he though in the in in terms of mind games i think he is doing well to get under I pep's think skin he's trying something he's trying he's something trying. he's trying like he knew the friendship with uh, pep thing didn't work for him or klopp in the second half yeah. right the whole friendship yeah. and passion angle didn't so it's yeah. like abi now slot and pep they they're not going to engage in anything because yeah. they have no history right <laughs> he's over like he's, he's yeah. like otherwise it's going to feel like he's just walking on the road some random guy like kya kar rahe the dude like yeah. that's not yeah. going to happen Yeah. So he has to try something. So I'm guessing yeah. he's trying. So is uh, and also I'm seeing he's very open to his tactics. By the way, which for Arteta at least, like I didn't expect a Jose Mourinho is defensive uh, masterclass against City. I mean they conceded. Uh, hello, yes. Hello, yeah. hello, 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 hello. That was insanely good, bro. Hey, don't hello. be that. Don't be Roy Keane. Don't be Roy Keane. Hey, hi, sha, 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 sha. <laughs> this is this is. Ah, Tony Pulis did that. David Moy, the fucking. uh Sean Dykes are every fucking week in week out people They forget Mourinho it. holds and scores Mourinho held and scored now of course he had he had the likes of Eto and he had the likes of Ronaldo and Bale but please like don't let's not like people forget Mourinho's Mourinho's respect yeah, respect yeah Mourinho's respect. clownish but not a clown like you know yeah. he's not yeah. like it's 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 not it's not some genius mori it's not mourinho as to just hold a nine like or to play what 5-4 uh, or 5-5 it's not mourinho yeah. has just to do that that could be tony pulis as is mourinho has to hold it and still win the game yeah, if they right, won that right. game now yeah. that's mourinho as because that's what he yeah. did he did that to pep when he had real he did that with inter he did that with porto for sure He's done that multiple times. Chan Chelsea, yeah. of course. Yeah, I don't need yeah. to tell you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he did. He's the guy who won the league with the least number of goals conceded, and killed it. And I'm guessing at back then it was one of the highest number of points. I think 86 points. If yeah. I'm not wrong, he won it with. So hello, yeah. hello, hello. Gatti is getting a lot of praise. <laughs> he is getting As a lot of praise. As to tell a fellow Hyderabadi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Right on that note, it is time to end this episode. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening uh, to the Corner Flag. You can reach us on our social media if you want to get in touch with us and tell us what you thought of this episode. Uh, you can find Mukesh on Instagram at uh, Mukesh Manjunath. <laughs> I don't know what he was. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to do over there, but uh, Mukesh was uh, suspiciously away from the mic and doing something. below the camera line so let's not get into that <laughs> you can find the gunty on instagram at guntin.92 and you can find me on instagram at amogran dive you can also follow the corner flag on instagram at the rate corner flag pod do subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com/atheratecornerflagpod hit that subscribe button like all our videos comment on them it really helps us and if you can't do that subscribe to us on apple podcast spotify or wherever you get your podcast from and leave us a five star review because that also goes a long way in people discovering this podcast shout out to kazad gurda for composing our theme tune and until next week it is good bye from us say bye mukesh bye guys bye ganti bye and it's bye from me <laughs>